one of those customers who has been a very, very early design partner, who has given us significant feedback on the requirements for next generation training and inference is OpenAI. And we have a very special guest today. I am so happy to say that um, you know, this person is a great friend, someone who is really an icon in AI. To hear more about our work, please welcome OpenAI founder and CEO, Sam Altman to the stage. <laughs> I call you an AI icon? I don't think so, but that's okay. I it's like your, it's your show. You do whatever you want. <laughs> um, Sam, look, uh, we are truly so happy and excited to be your partner. Um, OpenAI has truly been at the center of the universe. Everyone listens to what Sam Altman has to say uh, when it comes to Gen, Gen AI, and um, I think I like, think they just listen to ChatGPT at this point. Actually, I listen to ChatGPT. I'll, we'll I take it. Um, you know, some of the numbers I've seen, like over 500 million weekly active users, uh, just amazing growth. Um, can you just, just give us a little bit of a landscape? Where are we today? What's the state of play? What are you seeing? Um, you know, what, what's most exciting right now? It, it's definitely been, um, for us and many other people, just an explosion of usage over the last year. I think the models have gotten good enough that people have been able to build really great products, uh, text, images, voice, all kinds of reasoning capabilities. Uh, we've seen extremely quick adoption of the enterprise now. Coding's been one area people talk a lot about. But I, I think what we're hearing again and again in all these different ways is that these tools have gone from things that were, you know, fun and curious to like truly useful. Doing real work. work people's people, personal yeah. lives. Uh, and the, the fact that you can now like ask a system like Codex to go off and auto do some like work for you autonomously over minutes or hours, it's, it's like pretty remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, um, the key point that you said is, is really enterprises are seeing lots and lots of value. Um, you know, I think the other thing that's been amazing is, man, I mean, the rate and pace of what you guys are putting out, it seems like every week you have a new model, you know, workloads are just changing so fast. Um, like, what are you seeing? Like, how are things changing? And, you know, most importantly for us, like, how are you seeing compute demands changing? I mean, tons of changes all the time, but one of the biggest differences has been we've moved to these reasoning models. Uh, so we have these very long rollouts where uh, a model will go off and think about a problem and come back with a, a better answer or, y you know, like in some cases, like a whole PR ready to go. But this has really put pressure on model efficiency uh, and long context rollouts. Um, we need tons of compute, tons of memory, tons of CPUs as well. Uh, I've seen that actually. And our, like, our infrastructure ramp over the last year and what we're looking at over the next year has just been a crazy, crazy thing to watch. Is there ever enough GPUs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, theoretically, at some point, you can see that, like, a significant fraction of the power on Earth should be spent running AI compute. Um, and maybe we're going to get there. Yes, yes, no, that's, uh, that's definitely true. Um, look, we have been honored really we've uh, we've really really appreciate the partnership and collaboration uh, between you know open AI and AMD over the last few years um, you know working together in Azure uh, you know working on some of your research stuff and particularly you know the deep design on mi 450 I think you, know, you guys were really early in just some of the important insights um, can you just tell us a little bit about you know how that's evolved and and yeah. you know, sort of like how we can do more for you it's, it's been amazing working with you all, obviously, and uh, you know, we're, we're already running some work on the uh, 300X, but the, the MI450 series, I, I think, and the, the work we've been able to do there is, you've worked on that over the last couple of years, um, and we're very grateful for you listening to our input. Uh, hopefully, we'll be a good representative for what the industry as a whole needs, um, but we are extremely excited for the MI450. The memory architecture is great for inference, I believe it can be an incredible uh, option for training as well. And the, when you first started telling me what you were thinking about for the specs, I was like, there's no way. That just <laughs> sounds totally crazy. That's too big. Um, but it, it's really been so exciting to see you all get close to delivery on this. And I think it's going to be an amazing thing. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that very much. What, one of the things um, that really sticks in my mind is when we sat down with your engineers, they were like, whatever you do, just give us lots and lots of flexibility because things change so much. And uh, you know, really, that, yeah. that, that framework of, of working together has been phenomenal. 
Um, now, you know, Sam, look, this is, a, this is a moment here where we have lots of folks in AI wanting to know, like, you know, what's next. So um, help us with big picture. Like, what do you see in the future? You know, perspective on where things go, you know, how do, how do the workloads evolve? What happens with, you know, quote unquote, AGI? And, um, and really, you know, how do we as AMD and we as, you know, the computing industry kind of help enable all of that for you? At the beginning of the 2020s, uh, we didn't have, we didn't kind of have AI as we think of it today yet. We had a bunch of other systems, but that, that was still, you know, the pre-GPT-3 era, just by a little bit. And now as we sit at the sort of like halfway mark through the decade, it's really been remarkable progress from, uh, you know, not even a GPT-3 model to uh, GPT-4.5 and 03, these models that, that really feel smart and helpful and can give these sort of, you know, real utility experiences where people would look at this if they could go back in time and say that feels, that feels almost impossible. Like if, if you went back to 2020, said by halfway through the decade, we're going to be at this system that you can talk to and it's really smart. It's like a smart person that can do work for you. Um, I think we're going to maintain the same rate of progress, rate of improvement in these models for the second half of the decade as we did for the first. I wasn't so sure about that a couple of years ago. There were new research things to figure out, but now it looks like we'll be able to deliver on that. And so if you think forward to, to 2030 and the systems that we can have, um, these systems will be capable of remarkable new stuff. Novel scientific discovery, running extremely complex functions throughout society, um, and things that we just couldn't even imagine as possible before. To, to get there, to be able to deliver on this, uh, it's really going to take you know, these are huge systems now, very complex engineering projects, very complex research. And to keep on this curve of scaling, we've got to work together across research, engineering, hardware, how we're going to deliver these systems and products. Um, and this has gotten quite complex. But if we can do on that, if we, if we can deliver on that, if we can drive this collaboration across the whole industry, we will, we will keep this curve going. And so we're tremendously, work, tremendously excited about the work that we're doing with AMD uh, and what you all are going to deliver to... Uh, you know, we'll keep delivering great models. Uh, Sam, I can say that um, we really, really appreciate the work with OpenAI. You guys push us. You guys push us hard. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all want to deliver that vision. So thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you very much for having me. Yeah. And thank you for the partnership, too. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Now, at the heart of Helioso is the MI400 series. This is truly the most advanced accelerator we've ever built. It's really the engine for the next generation of AI, and it's designed to run trillion-plus parameter models. We deliver up to 40 petaflops of FP4 performance. We have 432 gigabytes of HBM4 and supports 300 gigabytes per second of scale-out bandwidth to connect across racks and clusters. Deliver up to 10x more performance for the most advanced frontier models, making MI400 the highest performing accelerator.